we'll start a little slowly. So um, welcome to everybody who's joining us. Um, this is a, an exciting new announcement, even though we had some technical difficulties with YouTube, I don't know why. Um, but uh, we got a new link going. Hopefully a few people can migrate over and ask a few questions. We got a few questions in advance, so I think we're good to go. Uh, today is, um, what, Thursday the 19th um, of May. I'm really excited to be here with Brad Folta today and to learn about his new big announcement, which is kind of released there above his head. But Brad, why don't I turn it over to you and let you tell us what's, what's going on? So yeah, no, our big new announcement, we've, we've been through all the trainings that we do through Honey Badger, through all the different areas that we focus on, we've been noticing that there isn't a good way to educate people these days, as far as it, when it comes to geomatics and geospatial. If they're coming out of college, it's usually one industry focused, like in natural resources, or they learn it in the sciences. Um, and they never, they never really dive deep into collecting data or bringing that data to the full visualization. So they, they come out one-sided. They come out, you know, like, oh, this is what I can do with it. And this is going to be my career for the next 20 years. And what we're aiming to do with the Minnesota Geospatial and Geomatics Institute is kind of change that paradigm, right? Like kids, folks are uh, kids who end up going to the Minnesota MGGI, as we call it, um, are going to be better uh, equipped to go out into the market, but they're not going to have to pay for a very expensive degree. They're not going to have to, you know, deal with uh, going and four years of whatever. We're, we're going to teach them what they need to know, how they need to know it, and in ways that make them think in that field, right? Um, I liken it to being able to speak a language. If, if you're able to speak multiple languages, you're able to think in those multiple languages ways, right? And so in geomatics and geospatial, you need to be able to think not only in your field, but in other people's fields, because you need to help them clarify slash you know, condense what they need into a geospatial platform or into a way of collecting data. So if, congratulations on opening the Institute, but um, for everyone listening, so this is a, an actual Institute or this is just a project? I mean, no. So, well, this has been about a year in the making. This has been putting together coursework. This has actually been, you know, framing it out, how this is going to play out. It's going to be at minimum a 72 day certificate program in the beginning or at maximum a six month length full-time course. Well, essentially full-time, uh, we'll, we're entertaining the idea of part-time, but coursework to work somebody through not only how to collect geospatial data and geomatic data, but also how to get it to that visualization and in turn build a portfolio for themselves that they can take to their next interview or to their next, um, you know, well, job application or even out into the public and say, this is what I can do. This is where I was trained and this is how I did it. The, the focus is to create that, well, not accredited, but um, credentialed uh, certificate through the Minnesota Department of Higher Education. And that's our last step in this whole process to launching by this fall. So we essentially have about four weeks and we'll find out whether or not we are ready to go as an institute, full-blown little institute. <laughs> Wow. Hey, and Bradford, I, we had a question that chatted in. Um, okay. Could this maybe be used towards a college degree? How do you see that playing out? Actually, so I can't say yes, but I won't say no. Um, the, the definition here is if the college that you're going to say, for instance, like my alma mater, University of Minnesota Duluth, because um, the Department of Higher Education holds the, the um, essentially the credentials to say that this certificate program is a real live educational program, you have the ability then to petition two state schools that recognize Department of Higher Education for the state of Minnesota uh, as, as, as far as an accrediting agency in a way. And so you can petition it in, you can ask your professors if it's a thing. So if it does and it helps count, we'll help you get there. We'll help you justify that for them and sh you know send them our syllabus on what we put you through to do the work that you do. Thank you. Well, um, and I think that's part of why, um, why, what I'll be helping you with. So um, right. I was really happy to uh, have you invite me to join your advisory board. It really combines my two hats of university where I'm a professor and I run programs uh, and ArenaCAD where, where we work in this exact field, uh, often with you and Honey Badger. Um, but I, I do see you'll have a lot of overlap. You're not really competing with universities but I think you'll give that next generation of students an opportunity for some real hands-on um, practical experience. I mean, how do, you, how do you see that? Is this gonna be for students or are these for people in the field? 
both? Well, that's actually, if I'll jump back really quick, that's why we also sought you out in the beginning as we were starting to put ideas together was because we wanted to engage somebody that both lives in the business world and also lives in the, the um, university world. It's it, usually you don't see a happy marrying between the two, right? So hence the reason we're like, well, we've got Chris Ball over here, economics professor and arena cat extraordinaire. Um, the, but to your point about, yeah, we're not gonna be in competition with the universities because we're gonna be focused on getting you skills that you can, well, we're not going to test you as it were, right? Like we're not going to sit here and focus on, you know, tell us how to operate a total station on a piece of paper. We're going to have you show us. We're going to get you the skills, the well, the hard skills that help support the soft skills you learn in university. And as we continue to grow our program, they'll always be an attribution slash they'll always be a standalone. So you can actually go out and work in things as, you know, as the field begins to blow up even more. For instance, right now we're focused on, like, you know, everything on earth, but mm -hmm. there's a huge movement into space. There's a huge movement into mapping other planets. It, it's all location, it's all measurement, it's all geospatial and it will all be geospatially represented. So we need to be better prepared for our workforce going into those areas, right? So that, that's our focus, to be an accompaniment and also to be a supplement to the current systems. Why don't you tell me then a, a little, um, this is all sort of very broad, um, why don't you tell me a little bit about, you know, what is it you're going to be doing? What, what classes are you going to be take, teaching? Um, you know, you, you're launching in the fall and, you know, what are those classes? Who would be looking for those? Who would benefit from them? A little so, bit down to earth here. Believe it or not, we, we actually came in looking at this as a job relocation program for folks, right? Um, I called the workforce center and I said, you know, how does one go about becoming a credit or a credible institute for you guys to utilize to teach new job skills? Because it's go to any conference in the geospatial market right now, everyone's suffering because they don't have the right people, but they don't have the right people because the people don't have the right experience and they don't want to take the time to train them. And that kind of grew into, well, this also, so this applies to the workforce people that you have been made redundant or are looking for a new job because they're tired of their old one. Um, it looks for, or they're, you know, they're complacent in their old one. Um, it's looking to students that are just coming out of high school that want to get job skills so they can go right into college and start working. It's looking at students that are coming in from colleges that want to supplement their engineering degree or they want to supplement their sciences degree or even social science degree. Um, so they can be better apt at going out and collecting data, bringing it to the full visualization. And the, the way the coursework signed up or set up is essentially, and it's, it's no thrills coursework, right? Intro to geomatics, intro to geospatial. But we start you out in groups. And as we work you through the, the essentially the 72 days, we're, we're training you to become more independent. And as we're training you to become more independent, we go from focusing on group projects all the way through to industry specific projects to see what your niche is. Are you an environmental person? Are you a utilities person? Are, where, where do you find it most interesting? And then we get you all the way to the very end where now you have this portfolio, you speak to all these industries, you can build that portfolio out even more on your own, uh, but you're using the latest equipment from like Trimble in, in, to do so. So when you do apply to a job or when you do take it to the next level, um, you can say, I've used a Trimble total station. I've used a scanning uh, or a terrestrial scanner. I've you know, worked with data sets with point clouds like this, that, and the other thing. And here you go. Here's my visualization. Um, really to help build that for folks. Because I can tell you on a resume, I know how to use a terrestrial total station. <laughs> but how do I explain that to you as a person without showing you, right? Like, or how do I show you as a potential employer, this is why you want to hire this person with these job skills because it might not help you right now with those skills, but it can help take your business further because you have those people with your skills, right? If you're a land surveyor, if you're an engineering firm and you've been focused on CAD and engineering products, now you have somebody that can bring you into the geospatial products and leverage more of those other than just an export that you put out into the world. Well, let me, let me that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I see it from the clients we work with in Arena CAD, traditional surveyors trying to move into a more digital age as well. I can see them going back to this. Um, the, for our broader audience, why don't you tell us a little bit, we'll step back for a second. Um, what is geospatial? What is geomatics? What's different? You've got both in the name of the Institute, 
Mm-hmm. Can you just describe for, for the audience what they are, what that means, and, and how you see it all fitting together? So geospatial, and people can argue with me on this, um, that's the whole point. <laughs> geospatial is a visualization of data, locational data, right? And it can be any locational data. It can be real time, like we're tracking you, myself, and Anne all at the same time, right? You can see where we are relative to each other. Or it could be analytics for logistics, right? Understanding where a package is or a widget is. Um, it's all about creating the pathways and the flows for folks to get data from one source to another uh, so everybody can stay on the same page without having to constantly call each other, send Excel spreadsheets, this, that, or the other thing. The, what Geospatial aims to do is help not eliminate the human factor, but make the human factor more efficient because we know, for instance, humans make a mistake every 30 minutes. Now, if you do this across a large supply chain, like you know an Ikea supply chain or something like that, if you're making a mistake every 30 minutes, we got a lot of money that's leaving the door. Uh, the more we can automate it, the more we can take the, the human air out of it, the better it gets. However, it, usually on that geospatial side, if we just focus on that, we forget about the data collection side or the data input. And that's where geomatics comes in. Geomatics is the measurement of everything around us or things that we want to go to, right? Like it's, we haven't been on Mars, you know, with a her, human yet, we have robots out there. Um, but we haven't been on Mars yet to, to do full measurements other than what we have with the technology we have today. Well, how do you employ that technology? How do you make sure it's accurate? How do you know that level of accuracy is consistent? You, you set up the protocols, you set up the methodology to build that out, and you think through these systems. As I always tell people with like aerial LIDAR or aerial imagery, your, your sensors or your accuracy is as good as your worst sensor. Hmm because you have to speak to that, but you have to know the sensors that are in play, not like everything about them, like the electrical components, but you have to know what's at play and you have to know how that plays out as far as your data goes. Because if I take and I collect say data with my cell phone and I wanna make centimeter interpretations out of it, if the GPS or the equipment that's associated with that cell phone can't define centimeter, then I cannot ex- over extrapolate. And that's why these two kind of merge together. You have to kind of see how the sausage is made or know how the sausage is made to get to the sausage And, you know, everyone loves a sausage, no one loves (laughs) how it's made kind of thing. Um, But it is in in understanding that and for our students who will come into the Institute, no matter where they fall in their careers, they'll get an idea of how that all plays together. They'll get an idea of how this all comes and fits together. So even though they might be a geospatial admin, right, they might be running an ArcGIS enterprise or they might be running a different sort of enterprise. Um, they'll understand where this is all coming from and they'll know how to ask the questions to make sure that their end users, the people who are not geospatial experts or geomatics experts, uh, you know, what level of data they can interpret or what they can take away from it and kind of prevent these other issues you run into or what you see on the market happening right now. Yeah. um, And uh, let me, um, let me ask this. So I I see a few questions popping up and let me kind of wrap up to help put the package together for for the people watching here um one uh this is not a a digital online thing i mean you're you've got uh i've seen them wonderful classroom spaces um tell us just very briefly where you're located now and and how you see that and then um and then I'll, i'll follow up with one other question and then we'll move to some of the questions that are starting to pop up on the chat that's, yeah, so right now we're in Brainerd, Minnesota, and we, we have a training room that is essentially, it's one big training room that's divided into three rooms. And so we can help, you know, move, well, as we're moving people through the training lessons, we have the workspace and we have the, the lecture space to help accommodate, well, each cohort will be about 16 people. So we can make sure everyone's getting the individual attention that they need. And they can, you know, we have the equipment that, to support them kind of a thing. Um, as we continue to grow this out, It's, well, I'll put it this way. Some classes will be online, but by no means will you be able to achieve a certificate with this institute by just attending online. It will, you have to show us that you know what you're doing. You have to be here in person to use the equipment. We have to be, you know, hands-on walking you through this stuff because it, it, no matter what equipment you use, you will run into an issue that you most likely won't be able to solve yourself. Yeah. And we, we have the experience, we have the knowledge, we've been through a lot of problems. I say it's always a $30,000 <laughs> headache. Um, but we've been through a lot of problems that can help you be better when you get into the field, help you field calibrate, help you do all these basic things that you should know how to do, but often are never taught because the person that's doing it, you know, has been in the job for 45 years, and that's just the way they've always done it. Yeah. Um, but as we continue to grow, as we, you know, branch out to different areas, uh, for instance, we already have a PhD 
um, instructor for like environmental assessment of coastal areas. And they said they would be more than willing to help us out. Um, was it teach in like New England area? And so we would put a classroom out there for students that need to go or that want to go out and learn specific. Like, you know, this is how we work with salt marshes. This is how we work with National Park Service. Stuff like that, that's more specialized as we continue to develop our, our portfolio of teaching. But as it stands right now, it's just a essentially three month or six month course in, um, well, well yeah, environmental utility, everything right here in Brainerd, Minnesota. I, I thank you. I ask you that also because uh, one of the reasons I was excited you asked me to get involved and, and that I, I love what you're doing is because there's just a prolifer proliferation of these sort of um, educational things tied around specific products, tied around specific software. And yours is not, this is a real institute. You're trying to educate the next generation and re-educate the existing generation um, and expand everybody's knowledge. And, um, you know, are, are there any industry specific? Are you industry agnostic? Is there any, are you promoting specific software or equipment or, you're going to train people on everything or how how do you we're, see it? we're going to aim to train people on everything we're going to try to stay as agnostic as possible but we do have partners that want to work with us right so we're we're an esri shop at honey badger analytics sure. we're going to teach in esri sorry to you know qgis but we're not <laughs> going to limit you to not use it right we're going to help yeah. you understand what's out there we're just not going to be the experts in it because okay. we're not the experts well yeah we're not the experts at honey badger i played in qgis for enough but not, you know, full on. Um, but the same with AutoCAD and MicroStation. We're going to stay agnostic on those fronts as we start to either develop more relationships or, you know, keeping the students best aware of what's out there. Because if you go work for a DOT in the United States, most likely it's MicroStation. If you work for a private firm, most likely it's AutoCAD. You're going to have the understanding and the fundamental, you know, uh, terms to go between the two. But it's really how your career develops out and what you become an expert in. And same with the technology, we're, we're a Trimble shop. So we, <laughs> we're going to be using Trimble, but it's not going to prevent you from using Leica or any of the other, the software out there, or well, Total Stations, stuff like that out there, hardware. One, one real quick one. Um, so people interested, where, where do they go? I see the website there. We're going to, if I can, oh, other way, there we go. Yeah, so the website down here, ggi-mn.org. And right now it's just a shell site. We're going to keep updating it as we add this stuff out. Um, I see one question that just popped in from uh, Tim Walsh out there about, you know, what about kids options for kids? We actually have reached out to the local high school and we have two classes that were in the works with them for fall 2022 as well to get kids interested at the high school level. It's, and the whole reason too is because I graduated from Brainerd High School and I have to. So, <laughs> of course. Um, so first of all, Brad, thank you. I think this is fantastic what you're doing. Um, I've known you for a few years now. I've seen you teaching other classes. I know you push your students. They appreciate it. Maybe not always on day one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but or the I've, one day I've, that we taught the training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it's been a pleasure to work with you. I look forward to being involved and helping connect you with universities and help advise on structure. And, and we'd love to see you over here in New England where, where we're located over here in Connecticut. Um, I'm sure our university has programs. We're working in environmental sciences, data science as well. So I, I think the whole thing is super exciting. I'd like to quickly thank Anne for helping oh, yeah. and monitor and handle questions today. To um, <laughs> we're also sort of the team that's going to be working on a newsletter and some information that's educational and content that can go out to everybody. So um, I, I appreciate working with you both. And with that, let me turn it over. And if you see a few questions, um, let's try and get through some of those for people. That's great, Chris. Thank you so much. And Bradford, thank you too. Uh, I'm gonna. We had a question that popped in a little bit earlier, and I'm gonna read it because I'm not always quite as savvy with the uh, technical language. So bear with me. And thanks for chatting this in. Um, I'm gonna read it out loud. Location analytics is a buzz phrase within the analytics analytic platform not directly related to GIS, Alteryx and Tableau. What does MGGI offer to data visualiz visualization experts not officially in the geospatial realm? 
Well, so that's a great question. Um, the what we're going to offer is we actually have part of our coursework called topics in geospatial geomatics, and this would be one of those things that would fit well into a topic, right? How does how do we get something like Alteryx? How do we get something like these other softwares to integrate well with uh, GIS? Or how what does that workflow look like, right? People have a hard enough time right now, supposedly getting CAD to work with GIS, even though the tools are out there that makes it pretty well achievable. Uh, with all tricks and everything else, they have GIS capability. You just don't see it proliferating much in the GIS community because a lot of us are still stuck in Excel. So as these things develop out, this is where we're going to be pushing students to look for these opportunities to bring these things in. Um, and especially as we keep a tab on what's going on in the market, we're going to be also teaching as it continues to grow. So if we see a market shift where Alteryx becomes one of the leading things, we're going to start putting together data programs. Well, we'll put together a program that will be focused on data integration and bringing these things together into one house. Well, not one house, but multiple houses serving one map kind of a thing. Good. Thank you. I've got another one here that popped in. Uh, this is a probably a little bit broader topic, and I know we've just got a couple of minutes left, so let's see what we can do with this one. Yep. What about the social side of mapping? That's So that's the thing you see right now happening kind of in the nonprofit world. The nonprofits that have embraced like geospatial technology or geomatics are running with it, and they're the ones that you can't fight, right, because they have all the statistics and stats behind it. The social sciences is often forgotten about when it comes to GIS. You, no one knows that their entire dispatch center for their local like authorities runs off of geospatial. It, it, typically, even the dispatchers themselves don't know it runs off geospatial. So for criminology, for what have you, the thing is, is we need to broaden more of these things out there. And that's what we, that's what the Institute is also about, opening up everyone's mind to it. It's, we recently, well, I recently talked to uh, college kids and told them about the field uh, over at the University of Oregon. And we had a number of them that said, hey, by the way, I never knew outside of natural resources that GIS could be applied. And I was just like, you're limiting yourself, not because, you know, you're, you're, you're staying in your lane, but because you're not, well, one, they're not teaching you, two, we're not showing you as an industry what it can do in its entirety. And that's the biggest thing. So the social scientists, scientists are a huge area for us because we want to see people explore and take that to the next level. Um, I mean, it's a perfect example of why you would use a survey one, two, three from Esri to do, you know, to help update and promote your maps. It's it, everyone has access to the tool that has an account, but they don't use it. And so, you know, we need to enable more of these things. Great. You know, we're at time. Uh, okay. If anybody has any more questions, pop them in. Otherwise, Bradford, again, where do we find information? Where should we go to look for it? Um, you know, just tell us a little bit more. I mean, this is really an exciting opportunity. We're all excited to be a part of it. And uh, we just want to be able to keep folks informed. Yeah. And so the ggi-mn.org, you can watch for it there. Uh, we're going to be posting on LinkedIn by the end of the today, like the, the web page, well, the, the showcase page and everything else. Um, you're going to see things start popping up. We're going to put a link on Honey Badger's website as we continue to develop things out. Um, bear with us. This summer is where we're really hitting the website hard. We're going to we're going to get all the coursework laid out. We're going to get the LMS system in there. So everyone's going to be ready to go by the time we hit fall. Now, if you're interested in being a student or an instructor or learning more about the institute, on the ggi-mn.org, there is a uh, contact us list. You can click on it, get on our mailing list. Uh, we'll send you an email. And at some point we'll send you, you know, what are you interested in being potentially, or how do you want to help support uh, the Geomatics and Geospatial Institute? So uh, pay, you know, watch your email, see what's coming out um, because we're definitely going to be in contact. Great. Oh, I'd like to thank everyone who, oh, not I, done yet. I, Keep going. I was going to say, and if you're a technology company or you're a small little company that's looking to push or promote your, your you know, tools or uh, software, definitely send us a link as well uh, here at Honey Badger or at bradford.folta at ggi-mn.org. Um, that way we can get these conversations happening because there, yeah, there's a myriad of tools out there. There's a myriad of softwares out there. We can make everybody at least aware of them, if not, you know, capable in them. So that's what our aim is. Great. Good. Well, we're a little past time. Thanks everybody for uh, your patience while we got going thank this you. morning. And thank you, Bradford and Chris, both for your input. We're so excited. And guys, keep your questions coming. Get out onto that website. Let us know what you're thinking. We're open to ideas. This is just such an exciting thing. We're ready to get started. So watch for more information. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you everyone thank you. for attending and sorry about the links today. <laughs>
<laughs> Have a good one. Bye. Okay. Still says record.